uh, it'll probably want to be one of those things where I literally um, start blogging and people start commenting, and, and it'll be a fan-driven uh, PDF project. Right, we're looking to drive more and more people, uh, drive things at the company and more through the community. The more we can get people to participate, the more people uh, are active and, um, and comment through feedback is incredibly valuable. And there, there's a little number on the site that, uh, that gives me great pleasure because, as you're saying, now that we fixed the software gateway so that it, does, you know, it recognizes you when you come back. There's a number on the site that maybe you'll look for in the future that I find fascinating. And down at the bottom, there are always guests on in the last 15 minutes, and a lot of them. So even beyond the, the community that we see in the right. posters, there's a lot of people looking, and I find that very promising. Yeah, the old site was pretty static. Um, uh, it had reached, it had done all it could do, and in fact, it was kind of um, reversing things a little bit, um, uh, which is unfortunate. But it was what we had at the time, and, uh, and the new site is is definitely um, turning things around in that regard. The uh, I, I should probably point out that um, I'm mentioning an alternate gear system. I'm talking about a, a streamlined version. There is an alternate gear system that's been mentioned on the forums called the Big Score. Uh, that is still on the slate. It's actually on Scott's desk now, and yeah. that one that one went through the tiger den. Uh, we, we often describe our, our design process as uh, three tigers in one stick. Yeah, yeah the, the, you know, one, 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 of, one of them drags it in and goes, look, the one that created the other two dying <laughs> on screen. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And uh, that, that one has gone through a couple of iterations, but it's actually fairly close at this point. So the text is all there, but the ideas are only like 90% there. We have to actually go back and implement it. Uh, and that actually is going to be, uh, it is an alternate gear system, but it, it's an alternate gear system that still uses uh, a lot of the same features that you already see. Uh, there is a, uh, a, you can keep their stuff, but it is not quite as full board as, as fantasy craft will be. Uh, it's more of a keep special items sort of thing, um, uh, focusing on your picks. So it, it still keeps the number of items very low. You, you know in your head the guy who you know, just shot down the helicopter on wow, I actually kind of like this rocket launcher. They don't keep it. <laughs> yeah, and you can do that. Uh, it, imagine it being roughly the same number of pieces you're already getting in the bar in, in the, the core spider can. Whereas this alternate thing that I'm talking about is literally boiling it down to, I am a soldier. I am defined by my desert eagle. I have that and one other item. The gear just sort of magically gets wiped away. Uh, there, there will be a system for handling gear, but, the, but, but it will not be about tracking gear or acquiring things. It's gonna, the alternate system I'm talking about is purely narrative character. It's about making gear fun uh, as an aspect of your character, not as, an, uh, as something your character attaches to or grabs. Uh, the other thing that's in, uh, in big score is, is uh, and, and the reason that sounds, by the way, very fluid is because it still is. The idea came up like nine days ago. Uh, probably won't be done for months. But we'll get a lot of fan feedback, and they'll tell me what, I love, what they like, and uh, they'll tell me what I like. I'll be the one writing it, so I guess they will be telling you the And uh, the other side of the big score is, uh, is the money driven system, um, which can be converted for gold, dollars, yen, or rubles, or whatever it should be. It's a peanut. Rubies, cash, money. Yeah. <laughs> Share with the class. Yes, pesos. Multiply these values by a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Um, any other questions? No? There's one product that I have heard recently, that I have an update up here, uh, Beatdown. Uh, Beatdown. Beatdown is, uh, Beatdown came from the, the same fertile soil as Practice Makes Perfect, and uh, I still have it. Uh, it. It sits on my hard drive, uh, and basically its status is I'm going to see what happens to the world when, current, when Practice Makes Perfect gets out there. Basically, once a thousand screaming pen bands work it over thoroughly, I'm going to go, that part worked, that part not so well, and then I will be coming back around to beat down to take advantage of that experience. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, is one of the settings in Fantasy Craft going to be uh, like maybe, I don't know, a low magic steampunk? Maybe a. Uh, <laughs> Anything related to your hat, perhaps? <laughs> 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 Um, well, I think Warpstone, uh, being a Renaissance era, I mean, I, I've actually written four Iron Kingdoms, and uh, we have a number of friends and friends here and things like that. So, um, 
I think there are, you can certainly cobble something together. Uh, when we played IK at, in my home game um, for, for a number of months, we used a gadget system that was Minecraft. That was Mechanica. You know, it, it's, it's just in the description and not in the developing your plans. And so so it'll Steve, be a short walk. Yes, so yeah, it's, I think you could, you could cobble something out of it. Yeah, Steampunk, um, I don't think Fantasy Craft is actually going to have specific Steampunk. It may have some material in it for how to do, how to sort of fake Steamcraft, uh, uh, Steamcraft, or Steampunk. Uh, we, Steamcraft. Steamcraft, yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> one of them. But we don't have plans to do a Steamcraft book, but we didn't have plans to do a fantasy craft book either. Um, and uh, um, it's possible that we may wind up doing something like that in the future. And, and it's a, a distinct enough genre that I think we want to hold it off to, to give it the full treatment in something that isn't fantasy. Because you could also do Steamcraft World War II. You could do Steamcraft Science Fiction. Oh, yeah. uh, this is alternate. Exactly. And, that, and so I, I, I would view that as something that we would want to do. Anything. Okay. Um, so I, I think that's something else that I want to, uh, I'd like to see, actually, being a fan feedback that might have been for that. If there are enough voices out there saying, God, we really like this setting, we want to see something more out of it, we're listening. With the exception of World Empire, we're done. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not specifically with fans. Those many settings can, can spawn fuller developments if people's if there's an overwhelming push towards one or the other. Um, on that topic, is there are there any things that you think uh, you'd like to see from us that you haven't heard of? Yep, yep. Oh, why yeah. is that with World of Fire? Is there just not a market for it, or are you tired? Such a positive way to there, answer. There, there, there's a, there is a third answer here. Yeah. Um, uh, you saw the Kevin Smith panel from Comic Con, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not as articulate as him, but still, I can bag on man moves all day long. I'll start with mine. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> some people will get it. Um, somebody asked a really awful question at Comic Con. He went off for like 30 seconds. It was brilliant. It was a work of art. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, Let's see. Uh, in all honesty, I am kind of tired. Uh, I, I, That's I, a fair answer. Yeah, I mean, I've been working on that setting now for like two years, uh, two and a half, really. And it started off as a it started off as a as a setting that was supposed to be an RPG. Then it mutated into a CCG, and then it mutated back into an RPG. And the problem is, in the third version, it's sort of an RPG that still uh, grapples with having been a CCG. And that was a very rugged transition. But it, I think it's good. I think I, I, I think it's everything that it could have been even in the first draft. And I'm very proud of it. But getting there was a nightmare uh, in a lot of ways. Oh, I, 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 I so got to comment on this process. Uh, yeah. And, and, and so yeah, I'm a little tired of it. I, I also think that that uh, um, it says what it needs to say. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that, that that there's an end process for everything you do. And when I went into World on Fire, I knew that I had, I had a vision for the uh, sum total of the amount of material I wanted to get in on this thing uh, before other people dove in the pool and the PDFs cover it and I'm finished. So the, the other part is that World on Fire ought to have a like, safety sign at the top of it that yeah. says, this is a dark ride. <laughs> because really, every time that World on Fire like, lurches forward with a giant body of text, it's usually a company like Pat calling me the whole night. Uh, I wrote, I, when I wrote the adventure for this, uh, the demo adventure for this show, I, uh, uh, it took me probably three or four days to uh, get to a black enough place yeah, before I could actually put 